Hawaiian Electric providing an update on the cause of the wildfires in Maui. The company stating today, quote, fire at 6.30 a.m. appears to have been caused by power lines that fell in high winds at about 3 p.m., a time when all of Hawaiian Electric's power lines in West Maui had been de-energized for more than six hours, a second fire began. Joining us now is Jamin Patel of Bloomberg Intelligence. And you can see the relief in the stock. Best day ever, up more than 40% then some, Jamin, is this an overreaction? Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily an overreaction. Um, it, it um, you know, it behooves uh, investors to, to take a closer look at what the findings, the possibilities are over here. Um, but the, you know, the stock had fallen quite a bit, so some recovery was uh, was was very likely in in you know given the circumstances here. But I think you know one of the things you've got to bear in mind here is that um, even if at the end of the day um, the court ruling doesn't completely put all of the blame on, on Hawaiian Electric. There is a good chance uh, that the, the company will have to bear some of the cost, some of the liability, uh, and, and so much more than at that point depends upon um, how much uh, of the fault lies with the company, with the utility itself, um, how much uh, in the way of negligence came, came into the picture here. Um, and that not only determines the liability, but it also uh, determines how, how much the company is able to recover through rates um, in, in terms of recovering that liability. Remember, it's also going to have to recover through rates a lot of the restoration costs that it's going through at this point. Jamin, how does this lawsuit play out? How long will it take before a lot of those questions are resolved? Oh, I think it could, you know, if you go by the PG&E bankruptcy, it could take a very long time um, to, to go through the courts. Now, a settlement may, may come somewhat earlier, but given the multiple class action lawsuits that have been filed here, um, it, you know, it, it, we're talking not about days or weeks. We're talking certainly about months, possibly uh, even 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 longer than that, um, before this thing shows up in court. Uh, all the all the evidence is put together. Um, in the meanwhile, I think it's very important to to remember that the company has suspended its dividends, and mm -hmm. one of the things that may hasten, may hasten um, uh, some kind of resolution here is the fact that a lot of local residents in Hawaii uh, own the stock, own the stock of uh, Hawaii Electric, and are dependent upon that dividend for for their uh, for their income. That's a great point, and it's going to be interesting to see if the company restores that at some point. But Hawaiian Electric currently up about 47 percent. Obviously, a huge rebound that we're seeing in the shares. What's it look like on the credit side, though? What could we see in terms of some of those longer maturities? Yeah, so I think that's that's uh, that's a really good question. I think on the credit side, unlike the shares, which are purely looking, you know, at the at the likelihood of liability and the amount that the company may eventually have to pay, how much extra debt will go on its balance sheet. Um, I think the bond prices at this point haven't moved as much. One, because they are not as liquid, obviously, mm. as the equity. Uh, but I, two, because this company has been downgraded to junk, and I don't think those junk ratings change anytime soon. Not until there is some definitive legal resolution to this. So as long as those bond price, uh, those ratings remain in junk territory, I don't think the bonds come back that much, uh, mm. certainly not to the extent that the equity has.